welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking a look at CPU performance in Battlefield 2042. And I've got to say, this is very likely the most difficult benchmark I've ever done. And not due to the time that was involved, though I did spend a tremendous amount of time testing, but more to do with how difficult the testing itself was. The problem faced when trying to test a multiplayer game like Battlefield 2042 is, well, that it's extremely difficult. And I can't emphasize this enough. It's extremely difficult to get accurate comparative data. Testing one or two harbor configurations, it's not too difficult or all that time consuming. Just play the game on the same map under the same test conditions for a few minutes, do that three times to record the average, and you have a pretty good idea of how those two compare. It might not be an exact apples to apples comparison, but it is certainly ballpark. But testing something like two dozen configurations for testing a wide range of CPUs is a massive undertaking. And long story short, it's taken me seven straight days of doing nothing but trying to load into a 128 player conquest match on the same map. For testing, I've used the orbital map, and of course that map wasn't always available in rotation, so I had to wait until it cycled into use. This, along with a number of other factors, meant that I was only able to test three to four CPUs per day. I've also included a separate 60 second test pass on that map using bots, which is much more controlled, and, well, easier to do because I can just test back to back without waiting for the map to come into rotation by using Portal. And it's also helpful because I have a fixed number of players or AI. It isn't as CPU demanding as there are less players, and being that they're AI, the load is different. But I'm more confident in the accuracy of that data. As I said, it is a more controlled test. Now, the 128 player conquest data is based on three minutes of gameplay, and because the amount of players in the server can change, I believe they're replaced with AI when players drop, but this does mean there's more variance. So I have done a three run average, which does help to address this. But please be aware, the margin for error is higher here when compared to our more controlled testing, and I was certainly seeing a larger run to run variance. It's also worth noting that during my testing, the game did receive a patch and Nvidia also released an updated driver. And this is important to note because I did use the GeForce RTX 3090 for all of my testing here. And I did that because it was typically faster than the Radeon RX 6900 XT in this game. And that was discovered previously in my GPU benchmark. Now, neither of these updates affect the results as I went back and checked a few configurations and the numbers were much the same, certainly within the margin of error. I believe the NVIDIA driver mostly addressed some DLSS related issues, while the game patch mostly addressed stability and bug fixes. So the testing was verified with the GeForce GameReady 496.76 WHKL driver using the latest version of the game. Also for all test configurations, I did use 32 gigabytes of dual rank dual channel DDR4 3200CL14 memory, but I've also included some memory results as well using a few different configurations. For now though, let's start with the CPU testing. Typically I test CPU performance at lower resolutions such as 1080p to help remove the GPU bottleneck. Though with Battlefield 2042, that's not really necessary, as you'll see shortly when we move to 1440p. But here at 1080p, we see that for the best performance, you'll want a 12th gen Intel processor, though we are only talking about an 8% performance advantage for the 12900K over the 5950X. The 12600K was also 9% faster than the 5800X, though the 1% low and 0.1% low data was comparable. What's really interesting to note though, is that despite the game being very CPU demanding, at least by normal gaming standards, the 5950X was just 5% faster than the 5600X when comparing the average frame rate, though it was up to 14% faster for the 1% low. Now the game does utilize eight cores when available, and with the 5950X essentially half the cores did nothing, they were just left around idling. So in the case of the Zen 3 architecture, eight cores aren't maxed out. So the 5950X saw utilization with 128 players of around 30 to 40%. With the 5800X, utilization was more in the range of 70 to 80%. So the only reason the 5950X was a few frames faster would be due to the slight increase in operating frequency, as stuff like cache capacity is the same per CCD. The 5600X was again similar despite being a six core 12 thread CPU, as the game didn't max out the 5800X, meaning a fast six core Zen 3 processor is still okay, though it is right on the edge with utilization often locked at around 
Now, despite this heavy utilization, the game didn't stutter, at least no more than what was witnessed using higher core count Zen 3 processors. But it does mean you are right on the edge with this part and slower six core 12 thread processors will start to see a decline in performance, assuming your GPU is capable of driving over 100 FPS using your desired quality settings. Now, for newer CPU architectures, it's less about core count and more about the IPC that particular architecture offers. That said, it's worth being aware that there is a little more variance on Intel's side as the L3 cache capacity increases from the core i5 to i7 and from the i7 to i9s. The difference between the 11th gen models is very minimal, and we're only talking about 6 versus 8 cores here, and of course there is less variance in the L3 cache capacity. But with the 10th gen, we do see as much as a 15% variation between the 10600K and 10900K, and again, this is largely due to quite a large change in L3 cache capacity. Then we see that AMD's Zen 2 processors mixed it up with Intel's 10th gen, and it was good to see parts like the Ryzen 5 3600X neck and neck with the Core i5 10600K. As we get down towards the Zen Plus parts, you can see how these older Ryzen CPUs are starting to show their age. The 2700X, for example, really struggled despite being an 8-core processor with 0.1% lows of 40 FPS, and while the 79 FPS average was still respectable, the 5800X was 43% faster here. Now, modern 4-core 8-thread CPUs can still technically play Battlefield 2042, but you can expect a lot more noticeable stuttering than what you'd receive on an equivalent 6- and 8-core model. What can't deliver playable performance, though, is 4-core four 4-thread four CPUs, such as the Core i3-8350K. The game was essentially broken with this CPU, providing nothing but constant stuttering. So looking over these numbers, I think the most surprising part being that even when throwing a significant amount of CPU processing power at the game, it's difficult to push much over 100 FPS in the large 128 player matches. And I'll talk more about this towards the end of the video. For now, let's take a look at the 1440p data. Here we see that the 1440p results are quite interesting as they much more closely reflect the GPU testing I did recently where the CPU limits were largely removed. So these results are more GPU limited when using higher end CPUs such as Intel's 12th gen or AMD's Ryzen 5000 series. For the rest of the CPUs though, the performance figures really much the same to what we saw at 1080p. As an example, the Core i9 11900K dropped from 113 FPS at 1080p to just 110 FPS at 1440p. So this really does explain why a lot of Battlefield players haven't been able to improve performance by lowering the resolution or reducing the quality settings. They're simply not GPU limited. Now this data is based on a custom bot match using nothing more than the game's AI. And when compared to the 128 player results just seen, the CPU utilization for a part like the Ryzen 5 5600X dropped by about 15%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it can make a significant difference. And that was enough to boost GPU performance by around 30% and improve 1% lows by a massive 50%, though interestingly, the 0.1% lows remained much the same, at least for the 5600X. And it's a similar story with older 6-core 12-thread processors like the 2600X. Here, the average frame rate increased by 20%, while the 1% low was boosted by an incredible 59%. And it's not just the mid-range to low-end CPUs that benefited massively from this lighter workload. The 12900K's average frame rate jumped up by 33%, with a 94% increase in 1% low performance. It's interesting to see such a massive change in performance through what is only a very small difference in utilization. But of course, the CPU load is likely very different, which is why utilization figures on their own can be quite misleading. And they don't always show you what's being bottlenecked within the CPU. So there's a bit more going on than just the overall utilization figure. Then jumping up to 1440p, we become GPU bound, and this sees all processors from the Core i5-10600K delivering very similar average frame rates, though the 12th gen CPUs were much better when looking at the 0.1% low performance. Now, given that we are heavily CPU limited in Battlefield 2042, it makes sense that memory would play a key role when it comes to performance, and sure enough it does. That said, we saw no improvement when moving to DDR5-6000 memory with the Core i9-12900K. In fact, we actually saw a slight performance regression, so that's a real shame and yet another blow to the current state of DDR5. 
Moving on to the Ryzen 9 5950X results though, I installed some budget DDR4 3000CL18 single rank memory, and here we see that the low latency DDR4 3200 kit boosts performance by 18%, with a 15% improvement to the 1% lows. So that is quite a significant difference given that DDR4 3000 and 3200 are quite similar in terms of frequency, but of course there is quite a big difference between the timings of these kits when comparing CL14 to CL18. Then moving on, using the same memory configurations, we saw up to a 21% improvement with the 8700K. And although this is a completely different CPU architecture, it makes sense that the more CPU limited you are, the more the higher quality memory can help. So if you have an 8700K and you're only able to drive around 70 FPS with a relatively high-end GPU, tuning your memory could lead to noticeable performance improvements though this does come with a risk to stability, so it is best left to experience overclockers, but I guess you've got to start somewhere, right? Okay, so as many gamers have noticed, Battlefield 2042 is a very CPU demanding game, and pushing past the 100 FPS barrier can be a real challenge. So, is this a fail on the developer's behalf? Is the game heavily unoptimized, and if so, can it be fixed? As I see it, the problem Battlefield 2042 faces is that of all modern games. Yes, it is very CPU intensive, but gamers shouldn't be concerned about the percentage utilization of their CPUs in Battlefield, as other aspects to the CPU might be limiting performance, such as cache performance or memory latency, which aren't included in that figure. Now, if the developer changed the game to utilize the CPU more and bump up that number on the higher end CPUs, the load on the CPU itself would be increased. And the problem with this is it would cause performance issues on lower end CPUs. So the game seems very demanding on multiple aspects of the CPU and optimizing for multiple areas could be difficult, but that doesn't mean it's unoptimized overall. So if you think the situation's bad right now, many gamers would have no chance of achieving anywhere near playable performance if the game was maxing out modern eight or 12 core processors, for example. And if we look at the official system requirements and focus on the AMD processors as the Intel recommendations are complete garbage, we see that the minimum spec is the Ryzen 5 1600. And based on the testing we've seen here from parts like the R5 2600X, which are only marginally faster, that recommendation makes perfect sense. It's really an absolute minimum. Then the recommended spec calls for at least a Ryzen 7 2700X. And really this is where you wanna be at minimum. But it has to be said, while this CPU was still a bit overwhelmed, the game was perfectly playable. So again, that recommendation makes sense. But had the developer utilized the CPU more heavily, the recommended spec would become something like the Ryzen 7 5800X. And at that point, very few could enjoy the game. And as a result, most of the lobbies would just be full of AI. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is while some gamers are often quick to criticize the developer by blurting out generic terms like unoptimized, the truth is it's a lot more complicated than that. And the truth in this specific example is Battlefield 2042, it has a lot going on. Firstly, they've doubled the player count and that's basically shown quad core processors the door while putting the heat on previous generation six core 12 thread processors. The game also features an advanced destruction system, weather effects, and so on. So as I've said, there's just a lot going on here, and I don't think the level of CPU usage that we're seeing is unjustified, or suggests to me at least that the game is heavily unoptimized. Could more be done to optimize the game? Probably, but will it radically change performance without compromising on player numbers or effects? I doubt it. It really is a fine balance between making the game playable for the majority of the fan base and adding new features like increasing the player count to make the game more exciting. You can't simply do more while requiring less, and I think that's what a lot of gamers were expecting. And it gets quite difficult for the developer because by not leaving the majority of gaming systems behind, they're also hobbling the performance of the latest and greatest hardware by underutilizing it. It's a delicate balancing act, and sadly it means compromises need to be made on both ends. Now, regardless of whether or not you think the game's requirements are justified, or it's just an unoptimized mess, if you want to play it and you want the most amount of performance possible, what's the best CPU to go for? Obviously, if you're already on the AM4 platform, the Ryzen 7 5800X looks to be the best option, though as far as I can tell, the cheaper 5600X works just fine, and quite a few 5600X owners did chime in on the GPU performance video and suggested that your performance was very good with that processor. And that was certainly what I saw during testing.
But the 50 Ultra Dex has come down in price, and at $390 US, it does offer a better cost per core ratio than the 5600X. So given that, and the added headroom, it's probably the way to go right now. For Intel owners, really depends on what you have. Anything older or slower than the Core i5-10600K, the upgrade to 12th gen with something like the 12600K is gonna net you around 30% greater performance, which in Battlefield 2042 is a significant improvement. And right now, the Core i5-12600K does look like the perfect CPU for Battlefield 2042. Throw it on the MSI Z690 Pro A or the Gigabyte Z690UD, and you have a powerful $500 combo. On a side note, I am testing those motherboards at the moment. They are very good value boards, no issues with VRM thermals or anything like that. So I do recommend either of those boards. They are good value at their current price points. And of course, DDR5, that's not required. In fact, for this one, you're actually just best off avoiding it. And speaking of memory, because this is a very CPU intensive game, memory does influence performance more than what you're probably used to seeing. Though those of you gaming at 4K, this will be less of an issue. But for those of you trying to drive as many frames as possible at lower resolutions, tightening up timings and increasing the frequency will dramatically improve performance. As for how much memory or RAM capacity you require, the good news is not a lot. In fact, 16 gigabytes is plenty as total system usage when playing Battlefield 2042 for extended periods of time never exceeded 12 gigabytes in our testing. Generally, it hovered around 10 gigabytes and that was with 32 gigabytes installed. The only time you're gonna creep well over that is when running out of VRAM and the game does require a lot of VRAM with the ultra quality settings. So you'll want at least an eight gigabyte graphics card, ideally more at 1440p or higher. Circling back to my earlier CPU testing, if we look at the 1080p data, you really only need a GeForce RTX 3060 Ti or Radeon RX 6700 XT when using a high-end CPU. And that's because the CPU will be the primary performance limiting component. Then for 1440p, the RTX 3080 or 6800 XT will be required. And I found that our 1440p CPU and GPU data was very similar, with just a 10% variation performance between the two different test methods. So that is Battlefield 2042's CPU and really system performance in a nutshell. And the takeaway here being bring a big CPU because you're gonna need it. And that is going to do it for this video and my hellish week long experience testing this game. If you appreciate all the work that went into this one, then please do hit the like button because I would appreciate that. And if you'd like to join the Harbor and Box community member, then you can do so over at Floatplane or Patreon. The links for both of those are in the video description. You'll get access to our exclusive Discord server where you can ask questions about benchmarks such as this or anything else that you would like to ask. Monthly live streams with two of myself that will be coming up on the channel next week. Well, not on this channel, but on our Patreon uh, channel, Patreon Floatplane stuff. What else we got? Dis live streams, Discord servers, behind the scenes content, Q&A, a lot of cool stuff there. So yeah, if you're interested, check it out. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And really, I would just like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.